Countdown. Two. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting of the Westville City Schools Board of Education. The agenda will be displayed on the screens in the front of the room. You may also follow along by connecting to the district website, www.wcsoh.org. Click on the district link, then select Board of Education, and then the Board Docs agenda, and then tonight's meeting. There will be two opportunities to address the board tonight, the first being agenda item 6.01. The first set of public comments is always uh, relative to um, agenda items, and tonight's agenda items are 7.01 through 11.02. So please, please state the agenda item you're referring to at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is agenda item 12.01. There's a sign-up sheet located on the table in the back of the room if you would like to speak tonight. Each speaker will have five minutes to address the board, and of course, a timer will be shown on the screen. And with that, Ms. Hendricks, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bird. Dr. Nestor Baker. Here. Mr. Villardo. Here. Mrs. Davison. Here. Ms. Cotter. Here. Okay, if you'd please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, moving on in the agenda, item 3.01, 3.02, and 3.03, .03. I'd like to recognize Mr. Villardo for our recognition section tonight. Thank you, President Cotter. As always, we are just really excited when uh, students or staff uh, go above and beyond. And so we have some uh, really exciting recognitions tonight. I'm going to go to the podium. I will ask uh, Dr. Kellogg and Ms. Hendricks to join the board up front, and then we will um, read some resolutions. order. I would first, before I read the resolution, like to call up, this is a South High School State Runner-Up Division I pole vault. Very excited about this. Uh, I'd like to bring up uh, Coach Jimmy Gall, right? You look surprised. <laughs> right? No, 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 not a bit. <laughs> And that is who I wanted to bring up for South. Let me read the resolution to you. And um, I'm going to just simply be honest and ask uh, the pronunciation of your name. Rehoboth. Rehoboth. And your last name? Ongundare. Ongundare. All right. I got it. <laughs> resolution of commendation for Westerville South High School, whereas Westerville South student athlete Rehoboth Ogundare, I got the last one better, didn't I? Thank you. Became the only pupil from his high school to earn a state berth by clearing 14 feet 4 inches in the pole vault competition at a regional meet held on May 23 at Pickerington North High School, and whereas Ogundare arrived at Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium on the campus of The Ohio State University on Saturday morning, June 2, 2018, ready to compete at the Division I State Pole Vault Contest, but unsure of the outcome since he was battling a sore foot. We put that right in the resolution. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's true, all right. And whereas, remarkably, Ogundare cleared a program record, 15 feet 2 inches, which was 8 inches higher than he had jumped all year, claimed his place as state runner-up and earned a nomination for a spot in the Top Cats Hall of Fame. Therefore, be it resolved 
that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent congratulate Ogundare and his coaches, Jimmy Hall and Jimmy Gall, for this outstanding accomplishment. Thank him for bringing honor and distinction to our school district and our community and wish him continuing success as he moves on to study and compete at the University of Indianapolis. Why don't you come on up here so we can congratulate you. shares just a word. Right. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here tonight, Dr. Kellogg, Board of Education, and guests to introduce and just talk for a brief moment about Rio. Uh, this is a young man who, as a freshman, we were quite unsure what to do with him, but quite sure that he was going to hurt himself at some point at track practice, um, who, over the course of his four-year career, found a home at the pole vault and continued working diligently um, in the summer, in the off-season, vaulting indoors, um, and as a junior became our most improved field event athlete, but failed to clear a height at the district meet. Um, to this year as a senior, uh, he didn't go over uh, 10 feet indoors. And then finally it all came together for him in the outdoor season. And we spent most Friday nights uh, as one of the last teams at Invitationals hanging around the pole vault pit watching this young man vault. Um, from all that to a league runner-up, a district champion, a state qualifier, and then to put it all together, uh, the biggest vault of his life at the regional meet when he needed his 14-4 clearance on his third attempt to guarantee a spot in the state meet, um, to the biggest vaults of his life, one height after the other at the state meet, um, to go from the program record to 15-2 um, to nearly the top of the podium was uh, a very special moment for Rio, I know, and for Coach Hall. Um, those two have worked tirelessly to get to this point and to be able to, um, you know, be able to put everything that he worked for for four years together when it mattered the most. And we're just very proud um, that he represented Westerville South and Westerville City Schools with class and dignity all year long. And I think all of his fellow competitors would uh, attest to that as well uh, with his personality and his friendliness in the competition area at all of our meets. So uh, it's with great pleasure that I present to you Rayo Ogundare to be commended here this evening. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite forward uh, Westerville Central uh, Athletic Director Andy I and Coach Ryan Borland. You can applaud for them too. I mean, they. You know. <laughs> Sam, this is in recognition of Division One state uh, runner-up, uh, seated division 100 meters, 400 meters, and 800 meters. Let me read the resolution before the athlete will come forward. Is it Lisa? Lisa. See, I had 50% chance. We called, her, we called her Lisa a couple nights. <laughs> Lisa Zepfel. Zepfel, thank you. Resolution of commendation for Westerville Central High School, whereas Westerville Central High School junior Lisa Zepfel is known throughout the school district and community for her tenacity and perseverance having been featured in several newspaper articles as an athlete who has overcome her disabilities with fierce determination. And whereas Zephel has been an active member in Central Ski Club and bowling team and has also participated in sled hockey, basketball, track and field, softball, horseback riding, and dance, and went to some classes in there too, right? 
And whereas her athleticism took her all the way to the Division I Ohio High School Athletic Association State Track and Field Championships on September, on, on Saturday, June 2nd, 2018, and whereas Zephyl came away from that meet with an astonishing three silver medals in the seated division, completing 100 meters in 22.07, 400 meters in 1.22.01, and 800 meters in 3.14.38. Very fast. Therefore, be it resolved that the board and superintendent commend Zephyl and her coach, Ryan Borland, for bringing honor and distinction to our school district, our community, and wish her continued success in all her future endeavors. Lisa, why don't you come over here while we applaud. <laughs> Members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, all of the guests that are here today, uh, it's a pleasure to get a chance to say a few things about Lissa. Um, this just completed her third year on our track and field team. Um, she's nine-time All-State athlete. Um, she has school records in the 400 and the 800. And anyone who's done athletics know uh, it's, it's hard, especially in, in our sport, to do multiple events. Many of those meets, the, the one, the four, and the eight, are very close together. And we've dealt with all kinds of weather this year, and uh, she's persevered through all of that. Um, she's a scholar athlete. And, uh, you know, on our team, there, there's a number of qualities that she embodies, but I think the three biggest ones that, that are definitely an inspiration to all of us is that she's always got a positive attitude, a very positive, kind person. She's got a fierce determination. She's a heck of a competitor. And she's got a tremendous work ethic. And, and all three of those qualities are things that we pride ourselves in and, and she exemplifies. We're real excited tonight to see her be honored this way. And so I want to present to you, Lissa Zipfel. One more round of applause for both these outstanding athletes and their coaches and staff. Uh, to uh, Lissa and Rio, see how I did that? I picked that up. Um, it's one thing for us to just read through quickly these resolutions and to shake your hand, but I want you to know the board, the administration, uh, we take all this very seriously because we know these outstanding uh, athletic accomplishments, as I teasingly said, come at the same time as academic accomplishments. And we are uh, very excited and prayer, uh, hopeful the, for your next steps and just very excited as you move forward. And I think uh, one more round of applause would be appropriate. Uh, to conclude our recognitions, we have uh, one that is a, a bit of a surprise. Um, I believe her name is Laura Hendricks. Laura Hendricks, would you come to the podium, please? <laughs> Laura is our uh, interim treasurer. Soon to take that interim part off there, aren't you? Both parts. <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah, she wants to be very clear about that. Uh, I'm just going to read the resolution because it will tell you why we are uh, honoring Laura tonight. Um, resolution of commendation for Laura Hendricks. 
Whereas on November 20, 2017, the Westerville City Schools Board of Education appointed Laura Hendricks as pro tem treasurer, confident in her ability to perform and oversee daily duties and responsibilities required of the treasurer's department. And whereas while continuing to fulfill the requirements of her own job as assistant treasurer, Hendricks tackled her additional tasks with vigor and competence, encompassing the receipt, accounting for, and disbursements of all funds of the school district as required by applicable laws in accordance with the board of education, uh, in accordance with the board regulations and policies. And whereas Hendricks also participated in the facilities master plan, provided input for the executive leadership team, assisted in preparing for negotiations, led board discussions regarding financial issues, and prepared a five-year forecast. And whereas the work Hendricks performed as interim treasurer ensured that the educational process of Westerville schools continued without interruption for all students and staff. And whereas the assistance she provided is providing for a newly appointed treasurer, Nicole Marshall, will no, long, will no doubt create a smooth and comfortable leadership transition for the school district. Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent sincerely thank Laura Hendricks for the professionalism and dedication she displayed in her role as interim treasurer. Please help us acknowledge Laura. About one more round of applause for Laura, our two students. Thank you all for coming tonight. You are welcome to stay for the rest of the Board of Education meeting, or as I turn around and can't see you, you can scoot out that side door. Okay, moving on the agenda to agenda item 4.01, approving the minutes of the June 11th, 2018 board meeting as read. Um, are there any questions or comments about these minutes? Okay, we don't actually vote on approving the minutes. Uh, it's just more of a formality in case there are questions. And then agenda item 5.01, safety and security upgrades. I believe that we're getting a report from Mr. Dorn. Good evening, President Cotter, Vice President Davidson, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, Ms. Hendricks. Uh, I am bringing to you um, some items for recommendations for safety and security upgrades for our district. As you might recall uh, from the facility master plan committee, one of the items that was still priority one was addressing, continue to addressing safety issues across the district. Um, for this uh, presentation and throughout uh, the, the way we, dis we discuss safety and security, we define safety not just as uh, life safety but in a broader context of the word as related to the general operations of a school to provide an environment conducive to teaching and learning and a safe and nurturing environment, which would also take in things like bullying, harassment, fighting, and other inappropriate behaviors in a school. Uh, Please know that this presentation um, is coming from a facilities and operations management framework 
there are far more things uh, involved in our districts, safety and security protocols, emergency operation plans, those kinds of things that are not being referenced here. This is strictly a physical context tonight. Um, we are working alongside uh, Debbie Meisner and the District Safety Committee, uh, th which is also being supported by Carrie Tressley. We are working alongside our district IT team because a lot of this is, is very technical uh, material. Uh, you know, they're going to be very supportive when it comes to infrastructure needs, technology evaluation, network capacity and bandwidth, as well as network security. And some of the uh, things you're going to hear tonight are feedback from various people that we've engaged with. Uh, building administrators, our maintenance department, we have some community partners who have volunteered their time to spend with us to look at things that we're doing and, and these initiatives. Um, and, you know, um, staff, uh, building staff, and then our police and fire departments. There we go. Uh, what we're looking at are phase one and phase two, and the phases are defined actually more uh, along the lines of not when we want to do things, but how they would be funded. And so as we're looking at phase one tonight, we're talking about um, updating our current camera systems, which need to be improved in terms of frame rates, pixel capacity, zooming and tracking capabilities, increased coverage uh, at our building access points, as well as interior coverage uh, expansion, Project costs for a project like this will include cameras, but it'll also include things like cables, network switches, local and central DVRs, et cetera. There, there are a lot more items that fall into this other than just going out and buying a camera and hanging it up. Uh, we're also looking at updating our video intercom systems. We currently use AI phones, uh, so they are hardwired to our front doors, and what we're looking at is making them network accessible, which allows us to not necessarily need a person sitting at a front desk to um, allow people to enter our guests because we don't always have somebody there, especially when you consider after school activities and things like that. The, with the new systems being network capable, um, they can be managed by portable devices and those devices can be shared by our other educational partners or extracurricular folks as well. We're looking at wireless door prop alerts. Um, these would maintain access control, uh, particularly at the secondary level when it's difficult to keep all of our doors uh, locked all the time because students tend to prop them open for, so when you consider where student parking is and where students are coming into the building and where our front doors are, those don't always match up. So these, uh, these wireless door alerts, and we'll talk more about some of these things here in a few minutes, but. These would just allow us some notification when something is, has been propped open. And then we're looking at a system, um, a mass notification system. Right now we're looking at a system um, by Status Solutions. It's called the SARA system, it's Situational Awareness and Response Assistant. Uh, really there are multiple brands out there. Uh, this happens to be a, a, a Westerville business who has um, offered hours and hours and hours of their time at no cost to the district to just help us come to grips with what it is that we can do at this point in today's te with today's technology and figure out which direction we want to go. So we have a no strings attached a relationship with them right now, um, but we are uh, very excited about the information that they've been able to give, give to us moving forward. Want to make sure though that we're not just talking about phase one, but phase two are things that some of these things still need to be flushed out, um, but the scope, the scope for some of these are not fully defined, and, and actually um, some of these items up here might be things that we decide as a community we wouldn't want to do, but they're on the list right now because we have not had a lot of conversation to talk, to talk about. So, um, but first, modifying access points so that guests move into the office prior to entering the building, uh, the, the regular portion of the building. We have a lot of schools right now where once you get buzzed in, you might not be able to find your way to the office because our signage isn't clear, um, but you're not you, you might be able to take a couple of different turns and, and before you run into uh, that person that's supposed to greet you. So some building modifications. Talk about um, some uh, panic buttons, uh, which, would, which are referred to as um, wireless duress alarm systems. And, um, and, and even 
portable ones that are pendants that people can wear that they can. So we've got those kinds of things. We've got window treatments uh, that might be something that we should consider at our front doors, uh, but also some other places in the building. Uh, we have, you know, when we have a, a classroom door, that's a nice solid door, but you've got a nice side light window next to it. That might be another place. But so these are all items that are uh, important for us to have conversations about. We should not forget about them, even though tonight we're going to really focus on phase one. Which can be a little bit difficult uh, to see from a PowerPoint presentation. Um, but if you look at the pictures on the left, uh, that, those are some of our older camera quality photos that we have right now. Um, you can barely read that clock on the wall and it's a close proximity to the camera. But we have a few newer HD cameras that we have in the district and you can see that on the right, um, the quality is just definitely crisper but they have um, far more pixels in them and so what happens with this is that you, it gives you the impression that you're able to zoom in. You can zoom in on the picture, you're not necessarily zooming in with the camera because it's after the fact but you can zoom in and still maintain quality in terms of what you're looking at. Uh, what I want to read to you now are some comments from our building administration related to our cameras. And I have about three pages, but I'm gonna, only going to read you one half of one sentence from each person uh, just, to, just to give you a good sense. So uh, we need to be able to see inside the schoolhouse in a clear and efficient way. It's ultimately needed. The majority of our cameras are old and very pixelated. We lack them in key areas. There's very little practical function for them. The picture quality is poor in all lighting. We do not have an easily accessible system. It's not necessarily in areas that are the most beneficial where cameras are located. The pictures are kind of murky. We ought to be able to use, uh, get a view of the cameras on desktop computers. What that says to me is we also need some education because we do have that ability right now. Um, and uh, we need cameras in which the footage is clear, not grainy. I can only tell who is involved by the color of a shirt. It is the key to student safety, watching for instances of bullying or student locations where, when they leave the classroom without permission. Uh, we need more exterior cameras installed. There are several blind areas in our buildings, but I think one principal summed it up pretty nicely. Not enough cameras, poorly located, extremely poor video quality, can't identify people, playback system is antiquated and doesn't work well, need to be able to connect them to phones, computers for playback. Here's another uh, sample, the quality on the right. So those, all of these pictures are all from Heritage Middle School. And so you can just see the difference. If you are trying to see something that's going on in the cafe on the left, uh, you're going to struggle with that unless there's students standing right underneath the camera or, or whoever it is. Uh, from our maintenance department, our cameras are varied in age from old to new. I think we, our oldest camera that's still up is about 20 years old. There are clarity issues, voltage issues, susceptible to vandalism in some of their placements. The recorders are analog and past their life expectancy. They were put in eight years ago as a district-wide standardization effort. Um, with that in mind, though, they only have about a five-year life expectancy. We've started to replace some of them, so we're just on the cusp of, of that uh, expense, regardless of what we decided to do here. Each one of those... Um, Recorders only hold 16 cameras, so once you get to 16, the magic number, you can't add another camera in the building without adding another whole system. And so, which is why you see a little bit of difference here uh, with Heritage. We try to go outside of our system, use an internet system, and all of a sudden we have two systems operating one building. That's very difficult for uh, a building administrator or somebody who's trying to, to use the system in an appropriate way. So standardization is the recommendation by our IT department, our maintenance department, and by our community partners, all of those that, that we've spoken with. So recommendations for changes for cameras to expand the coverage both interior and exterior. Uh, coverages in our high schools, for example, Central has 48 cameras, North 38 and South 32. Hilliard and Big Walnut, they have 64 cameras in their high schools. Worthington has 110 cameras in each of their high schools. Reynoldsburg has 130 cameras in their high schools. New Albany, 172 cameras in their high schools. So as you can see, uh, Columbus has 79 cameras on median in their high schools. 
we don't have as many cameras as some of our uh, fellow educators to work with. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying we need 172 cameras. What I'm just saying is that our people feel that there are some areas where we, we lack coverage that, that would be very helpful. Um, it's similar kind of numbers that, uh, not similar to high school, but similar ratios at our middle school levels and our elementary school levels. And when you look at our elementary school levels, we have some buildings that have two cameras, and, some, and I think our max might be 10. So uh, We talked about the improved clarity, uh, standardization, the facil facilitated access, whether it's on your phone or whether it's on your desktop, the life expectancy of our DVRs, we're, we're getting to the end of that window, and then the integration capabilities. Uh, as we talk about mass notification systems and the ability for an alert in one part of the building to draw a camera's attention and throw it up on a, somebody's desktop, we don't currently have that kind of a capability with our camera system, and our camera system would almost fight that as opposed to integrate easily with it. But again, it's not just cameras, it's cables, switches and racks, DVRs versus MVRs, whether we do it at the building level or we'll, whether we have a local uh, video recordings. But it's also licensing per camera, and some cameras, it's depending on what you want the camera to do, might require multiple license per that device. And then um, you've got questions about bandwidth and security and all these other things. And if you see that whole list right there, that is all our wonderful IT department. Um, would have to be supporters of uh, us on this project, um, and, and they've been great so far to work with. So, uh, but we we need to collaborate with many different groups to make sure something like this goes in in the appropriate and functional way um, for us to do this um, to best serve our students and staff. So, you know, one of the groups that's on there that I, I think we need to highlight are students. Um, I was part of an initiative like this in a high school, and they actually took uh, the building maps to the students and asked them where should the cameras go because they have a good idea about some things that happen in school buildings that shouldn't be happening in school buildings. And, and so um, it really th that sort of heat mapping progress is something that process is something we want to do with our students as well. When we move to our front doors, uh, currently we have AI phones. Um, what we'd like to do is go from a hardwire version of that to, uh, um, to a network version of it. Uh, we put those uh, buzzer systems in uh, a while back with a grant, through a grant. Well, um, some of them have started to fail. We just replaced two at South. And what we'd like to do is, as we see that coming, go ahead and, 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 and swap out system-wide, district-wide, so that we have that standardization again um, but we would like to make them network capable and also accessible from handheld devices so that we can use them in other ways. So that when we have our pr before school and our after school programs, instead of leaving the doors unlocked for people to come in the building, that they would still have access, we would still have some level of access control even though the receptionist is not working at that time. Um, maybe it's a coach on Saturday having a practice instead of unlocking the school or unlocking a door and then trying to go through the building to find out to make sure nobody's in the building before they reset the alarm. Just so, so there's a lot of varied um, uses outside of just a normal school day. But what it will do is this. When you think about South High School's parking lot for students, that's pretty far from the front door where we actually man this. Well, when they become network capable, where they don't have to be hardwired to that desk, we can have a person who's also operating it for that door, which hopefully would eliminate more of the door propping and things like that that go on. Just a little bit on door props. Um, what you do is you're just essentially, essentially putting a wireless alert on a door. When it's held open for a certain amount of time, a certain protocol gets kicked in. Some of them just make a, a, you know, a really annoying noise for somebody to come and do it. Others can speak to your network and, and tell you to do different things. What we envision is um, maybe a network radio call that just says door 12 is propped open and whoever's close to door 12 can go close the door, but also um, a video of the camera on door 12 to pop up so we can make sure that what's going on is that maybe we're taking a delivery or maybe somebody's trying to come through the building. So we, we want to make sure that we have that kind of uh, ability to 
follow protocols that we set and determine what we want to do. So they don't have to be um, a standard protocol. It's, it's, it'll be our determined protocol. The last thing I want to talk about this evening is um, what is referred to as SARA when we're having our conversations, the Situational Awareness and Response Assistant. This is the software product from Status Solutions and the School Solutions Network. Um, they have, uh, they are willing to donate the software for our use uh, as one of our community partners. We currently have no agreement with them. We, we, we're not, um, we, while they do do some of these other things, we, we have a no strings attached um, arrangement with them right now, and so we've been very fortunate to get a lot of really good information from them. But it's a risk management uh, solution, um, a district-wide risk management strategy. It addresses both emergency responses and also everyday operations, such as door alerts or, or a fire panel that has a, uh, you know, there's an issue with a filter, one of, you know, one of the um, sensors in a duct work or something like that as opposed to a, a pull-on. So it, it can be, it's an information share, and it shares information based on how we set it up to share it. So whether it's Sarah or whether it's some other product, this, this a product that ties all of our systems together, all of our sensors together, what's going on with the freezer at North versus um, is there, you know, environmental control issues, you know, at, at one of our other buildings. It, it just brings all these things together into a common platform if we decide to jump in and go that full route. So that's phase one. What kind of questions can I answer for you? Who's calling? Sure, I have a couple of questions, Scott. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, more of a comment than a question. I want to see us move ahead with this as quickly as we can. The components that you've identified um, are pieces that we really need to do. Oh my gosh, I was sitting here when we bid those cameras 20 years ago, oh my goodness. The threats we were looking for then are very different than the threats we're looking for now. And to assume or to kind of eke out additional life for what we put in 20 years ago for different threats is um, overly optimistic uh, at best. So I want to see us move forward with each of these components. I also wonder if you would convey thanks to Status Solutions for the assistance that they provided thus far. That's uh, a lot of time, a lot of resources for a private company. I appreciate that as much as I appreciate our other, our other partners as well. I'm wondering if you can tell me why the integration of com communication systems is in phase two instead of phase one. The integration of communication systems, um, well, first of all, there's some divvying up based on um, potential funding. So that remember, it's not a, in a particular order, but what we're talking about with integration of, of communication systems, we're, we're talking about being able to get on the PA system from a phone in a classroom versus the one spot in the office that you have to get to in order to do mass communication to the school or the radio system, our new radio systems, to the PA system. So some of those things need to be, some of our PA systems, uh, we, we actually started with that concept about um, early in this year, and I went and I took a picture of the front and back of every one of our PA systems and sent it to um, an engineer, and his response was, oh boy. So, it, so, <laughs> It's definitely something that needs to be done, but I think it's, that is going to be a little bit more um, okay. involved in terms of every building has a different issue as opposed to this. These all issues are very similar and, and standardization can be applied. Um, but that we don't sense. necessarily want to take out an entire PA system, have all PA systems the same and redo them all at one time because that would be an amazing feat. Yeah, yeah, it would. that makes good sense. Do you think we have enough FTE in our IT department to handle the load we would be putting on them? Uh, I have some concerns about that, and uh, I have concerns not because I understand the IT world, but because my, our IT department has expressed some concerns um, when it comes to, you know, cameras where they started, they, uh, and many districts started with the maintenance department because it was hang a camera, run a cable, and, and now it's, 
now you're talking about, you know, are we doing power over Ethernet? Or, or those are hackable at this point. So we, you've got to maintain secure district network security. So that's not necessarily somebody in our maintenance department's forte. Um, the staffing piece, do I think, well, everybody would benefit from more staffing. Let's just say it that way. But uh, particularly something dedicated to this would probably be much appreciated. Yeah, I think we need to keep that in mind. And then my last question, um, as we look at uh, moving everything to network capacity, how are we going to avoid the network outages that we run into? Well, I, you know, at the beginning of this year, and, and like I said, I'm not an IT guy, but I know we went from three to five, and I know that was a really good thing to do. So we. Somebody, somebody, somebody talked about it this morning at our meeting, and they said it's like going from a garden hose to a fire hose, and so we have the ability to, to move more data. But one of the things you have to make sure that you're doing is if we're going to back up our files, um, all these video files, we don't do that during the school day. You know, as soon as the school day is over, our, our capacity opens wide, you know, wide open. So we just have to be smart about the things that we do. If we're going to do... Um, you know, a centralized server, but if, if we're going to do it the way we're currently doing it with on-site DVRs, um, that might not necessarily be an issue. But but the definitely um, something that our technical people need to weigh in on. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, as I, I just want to reiterate how important this work is, and uh, in my opinion, we need to move ahead as quickly as we possibly can. Yeah, just quickly echo that. Um, there was an article in the dispatch today about uh, some school districts, uh, school boards uh, debating whether they wanted to put some SROs in their schools. Some of the some of the players around here, um, main school districts don't have any SROs in, in the building. I, I was shocked at that. Um, the, but the schools I grew up in had officers, so I, I just see that as a natural thing, which might not be good, but I see it as a natural thing. Um, I uh, really appreciate the work that you and your team have done on this already. I echo uh, Nancy that if we can, uh, if we can make our schools safer, and that's the end, that's the end, really, through all these words, that's the end, trying to make it safer. Um, it's awfully important, and uh, we need to have the resources to do that. We need to apply the resources to do that. So keep us keep us in that loop tightly. Um, I know that you're still early in the planning stages, but do you have any cost estimates for each phase? Well, we have some different cost estimates, and they're based on different different ways of looking at it. So when we did our facility master plan, uh, or at the beginning of the year, we had Triad come through and do, build, you know, um, part of their estimates were um, changing some storefronts uh, and adding cameras. Uh, the o OFCC also provided some numbers, uh, and they vary from Triad's numbers, and but their numbers are calculated based on a value multiplied by square footage We've also um, quoted out one of our middle schools just to see what that will cost. Um, and then we've extrapolated that data both up and down based on number of cameras, what we think for a high school, what we think for um, an, el uh, an elementary school. And um, we've talked with some other folks, uh, other people in, in the role similar to mine uh, uh, around Central Ohio and, and talked to them about it. and. Um, we've been given numbers like you should use the number $1,500 per camera as a good guide for um, all the things that go into it, not just the camera, but the switches and the cabling and all that. But other districts have said 2000 So I think what's difficult, what's, what's important to know is that it's expensive. Um, I would guess that the cameras will probably be in the ballpark of $1.5 million. Um, but until you actually put an RFP out, do we actually sit down with our SROs and say, what do you think about camera placements for these particular buildings? And then we sit down with our building staff 
and our students in some cases and say, where do we, you think that our coverage needs expanded? We get those camera counts, we get the RFP out, and that's when we start seeing that data come in. So, um, but I would say we're looking at about 1.5 million for, for the camera systems in general. Um, the wireless door alerts, if you, when you start thinking about those, you're looking at maybe $100 a door, but then you're also, that's just for the alert. Then you need the software that it interacts with, and you need the repeaters in the building so that that talks to, so it gets it all the way back to the network, so you, you've got some things. Um, that's probably somewhere for our three high schools, somewhere between thirty and, and $100,000 total for the three high schools. Um, the if we updated our AI phones, we just updated two of those uh, at South, and that was about $3,500 a unit. There are other systems out there, though, that might not be as expensive, and so there's some exploration needs to be done. Um, but when you think about the number of buildings that we have, plus a couple of additional for entries from maybe Central and South where you're coming in from student parking, um, you're starting to escalate that, that value there as well. Uh, again, what's the SARA system, um, we have, we have a, a server invested in it. We didn't have to buy a server because we had the server available to us right now and um, with that system. So we're, but we're really just putting our toes in the water on that and we are connecting two fire panels to it um, so that when we have fire panel notifications, we actually see what, what we're getting and how would we set up our protocol for that and we're putting it on just a few desktop computers so that we can, uh, and they'll all be here for right now, just so we can see how the system works and, and um, make sure it is something that we have an interest in, whether it's that system or some other system, but something that's usable for us uh, as well. So and that would right now has really no cost associated with it until we start trying to integrate things together. Okay. <coughs> well, thank you for you know, putting all this together. It's, it's good to get the information early on in the process. Um, did you have any questions on the safety? Just, no, it's okay. Actually, I'm the facilities liaison, so I knew a lot of this was coming. I just want to thank you for all your hard work. Great job. Appreciate it. You know, I, um, I appreciate that. I just want to, as you could tell by a lot of the things in here, this is um, a lot of other people uh, mm -hmm. affiliated with our school, school district, as well as community partners. And um, I've taken the role of pushing everybody to, to um, but really, it's IT's work, and it's um, Debbie Meisner's committees, and 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 our community partners. Uh, we're just very thankful. I'm just very thankful for that all of them have put this much time into it because they all have the same goal as you do. Um, you know, in terms of keeping our kids and staff safe. Also, want to thank. Um, make sure I publicly thank um, Worthington Industries, John McConnell. He sent his security team over to walk one of our buildings with us, and and it was very nice uh, their perspective on this plan, um, this initiative, and how it works in our world versus how it works in their world. And um, they spent maybe four to five hours with us last week. Um, it was really nice, so. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda item 6.01, public comments. Uh, I see that we do not have anyone signed up for public comments for this agenda item this evening. So we will go ahead and skip to um, agenda items um, 7.01, 7.02, 7.03, 7 and 7.04. I can have a motion and a second to discuss those items. So moved. Second. Fund for May, $11,951,000. Is the state issued for fund? Is $176,998,000. Uh, monthly expenditures, $13,331,000. Year to date expenditures, $151,655,000. Uh, an unencumbered general fund balance as of the end of May, $114,534,000. All funds, receipts, $17,395,000. Uh, monthly expenditures for all funds, $18,638,000. Uh, 
and unencumbered fund balance for all funds, $134,794,000. Any questions or comments? Would you please call the roll? Dr. Nestor-Baker. Yes. Ms. Davidson. Yes. Mr. Berg. Yes. Mr. Villardo. Yes. Ms. Cotter. Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda item 8.01. Oh, no, we oh. have to do each one. Oh, I'm sorry, am I getting ahead of the schedule? Yeah, we have to do each okay. one. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> I thought we were taking it as a group. Yes, you want to do. I said, are you doing one for the whole thing? But we voted on it, that's why. <laughs> so, should I get another motion and a second for the, the, group, the group, rest of the group then? Can I get a motion and a second for agenda item 7.02 through 7.04? So moved. Second. All right. So then 7.02 is just our final appropriations for 2000, fiscal year 2018. Um, just a few adjustments on some grants and activity funds. Uh, general fund is remaining the same as we updated in May uh, when we did the forecast. Um, overall expenditures for all funds um, have decreased uh, since our May appropriation provision of $1.7 million. Questions on that one? No. Yeah. All right. And then 7.03 is our uh, beginning appropriations for fiscal year 2019. Um, again, um, this is our starting point for next year. Uh, general fund at $175,900,000 um, based on our forecast that we did in May. And then all other funds, federal funds, um, for, uh, bond fund, others um, are just set up. Um, no unusual fluctuations in any of those. And then the last one, 7.04, is our annual transfer of funds from the general fund to the 009 Uniform School Supplies Fund in the amount of $25,500. Again, this is our annual um, resolution to move that money from the general fund to cover uh, fees, instructional fees that were waived um, in the 009 fund. Any questions? Can you please call the roll? Dr. Nestor Baker. Yes. Mr. Villardo. Yes. Mr. Berg. Ms. Davidson. Yes. Ms. Cotter. Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda items 8.01 through 8.13. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Looks like Mr. Hersheiser is gonna be talking about those. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board. Uh, tonight's consent agenda uh, on resignations, we have four licensed teachers, uh, 15 classified staff. Uh, within the 15 classified staff, we have some substitute drivers as well as some former student workers who graduated, uh, so we had to resign them. Uh, we have one classified employee who's retiring, C.J. McGinty, is uh, secretary at Charrington. Leave of absence, we have two teachers within our one-time payments, uh, include 58 food service personnel who completed some food safety training. In our contractual status change, uh, we have seven. One is Jan Horn, who is going to be an assistant transportation manager. In our change of assignment, uh, we have a few changes. In our classified ranks, we have Earl Ram, who will be going from Anhurst to Alcott. In our employment section, we, our HR uh, people have been very busy. We have almost 350 supplementals on tonight uh, for all of, our, all of the fall stuff that we have coming up. Um, so a lot of those practices and condition, conditionings and things take place. Now, we also have 10 licensed teachers, and with us tonight, we have two licensed administrators, Tabitha Wilburn, who will be the principal at Anhurst, and Jason Fullen, who will be an assistant principal at Faust, Point View, and McBell. So that is our consent agenda. Any comments or questions? Just welcome. Yeah. Could, could we get them to intro their guests? Because they've been sitting sure. there too. I thought yeah. that might be. Yeah. And the little guys just fascinated me, so <laughs> I want to meet them. I'm with him. This is my four year old Allison, and I I really do call her the Mad Skimp, and I recently had her for two days at school, so it's wonderful being with you tonight. 
Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. I tell you, I was looking on Facebook before I came over here tonight, and there are lots of comments about both, well, actually all three of you, but our two new hires, administrative hires this evening, and they are extremely positive and very, very welcoming. Um, so word is out already, and people are excited that you all are joining us. I think Dr. Kellogg takes out every new hire for ice cream after the meeting, is that right? Yeah, what should time should we be on your back porch for the ice okay. cream? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Can you please call roll? Mr. Valerda. Yes. Mrs. Bates. Yes. Mr. Bates. Dr. Escobar. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item 9.01. Um, can I have a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. This is a policy that was previously discussed. Is there Correct, second any, reading. Any questions for anybody at this point now? Okay, then I think, could you please call the roll? Mm -hmm. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Uh, Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay. There is no new business, which is agenda item 10.01. Uh, moving on, uh, can I please have a motion and a second for agenda item 11.01, .01, donations? So, so moved. Second. As always, we're very thankful and appreciative for donations. Um, can you please call the roll? Mr. Villardo? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda item 11.02, resolution for Calamity Day alternative makeup plan. Um, can I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. So this is a routine item. Do you want to talk about it, Dr. Kellogg? Or? Jen, you have this one this evening, is that correct? This, the climate? Sorry. I'll bring up the expert. Okay. I don't know about that. I just call them. She just makes sure that they get <laughs> educated. Well, it's funny because I looked back at this because it is something that the district has to do every year prior to August 1st. Um, it's, um, but as I looked back, we've been doing this since the 12-13 school year, if you can imagine that. Um, so what this allows us to do is to uh, provide instruction um, for students to do um, activities at home up to three days. So we can make up up to three snow days or calamity days, you know, whatever that calamity may be, uh, per Ohio Revised Code and recommendations from the state. Previously, we had to submit uh, this plan and resolution to the State Department by a certain uh, date, but we just have to keep that in-house now. That's really been the only change. Um, another change over the past several years was when we switched from days to hours. That took uh, a lot of calculating with uh, Greg V. Brands and his department uh, to make sure that our calendar matched. Um, so those have really been the only significant changes over the past several years. And per uh, Ohio Revised Code, it's been signed by our WA uh, union president. Are there any questions? Thank you. Are there any questions? Can you please call the roll? Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item 12.01, public comment. Um, I again see that nobody has signed up for public comment for this particular agenda item. So we will move on to agenda item 13.01, board comments. Would anyone on the board like to make comments? I have two quick things, I promise. Um, we, we zipped through the donations, um, and, and we are grateful for all of it. We really are, and, and, and I won't call out name, uh, but, but I, uh, one family donated to a school in memory of their daughter who was killed um, 
uh, some time ago, and, and I, I just, um, that's just a powerful thing mm -hmm. for a family to uh, try and deal with their own grief um, in that way. So I just want to acknowledge uh, all the donations, absolutely, but I just, uh, that's a pretty powerful thing. Um, and I, I want to, uh, this has uh, n nothing to do with anything on the agenda, has nothing to do with anything here, and it has everything to do with it. I'd like to uh, say thank you to a man named uh, Harry Miller. Harry Miller is a man who I got to know um, at the community center. Uh, may not know at all Harry. Uh, uh, I met Harry when I was uh, running for the school board, and, and he uh, tried awfully hard to talk me out of that. Um, and finally, I asked him why, and he said, well, I was on the school board. And I said, well, okay, well, <laughs> tell me about that experience. And he told me about the experience and just real quickly. He, he passed away uh, at 95, uh, just 94, 95, just uh, like two weeks ago. He told me about this time when uh, he was on the board, and I, I, I believe I'm remembering the story correctly, and, and, and he was in his 90s, so, you know. Um, he said, uh, I was on the board when we bought the land for that uh, uh, Westerville High School. They now call it South. <laughs> I said, really? He said, I said, you were, you were on the board at that time. He said, yeah. And he said, let me tell you two things. He said, number one, the community said, you are nuts to spend that kind of money on land. And the second thing he said is we got in deep trouble because it was so far away from the city of Westerville. And I thought, well, Harry, I mean, I just, uh, it was just an interesting <laughs> perspective. Um, and that has nothing to do with it, but it has everything to do with it because uh, we're placeholding for the people that have come before us for decades. And someday, God willing, we'll be in our 94s and somebody will say we're running for school board and uh, Nancy will try to talk them out of it. <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks to Harry and to really all the people that have brought this school district to, I think, a tremendous place, and Lord willing, we will honor them and try to keep it strong. So, Any other comments? Laura, I just want to say one more time thank you. I know this took a toll on your family, and um, we truly appreciate your expertise, your time, your loyalty. So thank you again. I'd also like to echo those thanks. Really appreciate everything you've done. Okay, moving on to agenda item 14.01. The board will meet in regular session on Monday, July 9th at 7 a.m. for all our early risers. And on Monday, August 13th at 6 p.m. here at the Early Learning Center. Um, and at this time, I would like to entertain a motion and a second for executive session for the purposes of preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations and for the consideration of the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee, student, or school official, or to investigate charges or complaints against any such person. So moved. Se second. All of that. <laughs> Can you please call the roll? Dr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Ms. Yes. Um, and I would like to let everyone know that we do not anticipate any business after executive session tonight, uh, and we will adjourn from executive session. Thank you all for coming this evening, and have a nice night.